Clearance is tomorrow. If you plan to go, bring your student ID card and $10. Good morning, Centurions. I'm Patrick Moyna, and today is Thursday, March 9th. And I'm Jake Freeman, and this is SNN. Coming up today, we continue Women's History Month with Owen Derry and take a look at the dangers of distracted driving. Today's also National Meatball Day. Guess where the spaghetti goes to the dance? I won't do it. The meatball. You need to be stopped. Please stand for the pledge. During the month of March, the Santa Clarita is celebrating one story, one book, with The Rise of the Rocket Girls by Natalia Holt. The week one winners of a free copy are library patrons McKenna Gross and Luke Lennard. The books are available in the library. Prom will be held at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley on Saturday, April 29th. Ticket sales will begin on Monday, March 27th. Tickets will be $130 with an ASB card and $135 without. Buy your tickets as the price will increase every week. The last day to buy the tickets will be April 21st. Remember, the dance is not included in the dance pack. Now let's go to Chris Kulik with your sports news. Good morning, Centurions. I'm Chris Kulik with your sports news. The Saugus High Varsity Boys golf team defeated Canyon by many fairways Wednesday afternoon at Robinson Ranch. The team was led by junior Riley Herman and sophomore Riley Watson. As both carded 79s, senior Trevor Daher contributed with an 81, junior Braden Boss fired 83, and senior Benny Emeterio shot 84 as the team improved to 2-0. to zero. They compete against Canyon today at noon at Robinson Ranch. Good luck, boys. Swim competes against Ventura tomorrow at the Santa Clarita Aquatic Center. They will start getting wet at 3.15. Boys tennis will play Crespi tomorrow at the Bramer Country Club. The match will start at 2.30 p.m. Distracted driving has been an increasing issue all across America. Stay tuned for an important message. Okay, let's put some music on. over here. Never take your eyes off the road for any reason. It could risk your life and the lives of others. And now for your senior news. Diploma forms have been distributed to your government and econ classes. If you are not enrolled in either of these classes, you must go to the registrar's office to complete your diploma form. You are now able to apply for the Santa Clarita Valley Scholarship Foundation. Thousands of dollars will be awarded to seniors. To apply, download the application at the website listed below. The final day to buy tickets for Grad Night 2017 is coming up. March 15th will be the last day to purchase them. Buy a ticket now if you plan to go. All stairs are final and there will be no refunds. Purchase your ticket in the ASB office. If you are planning on attending College of the Canyons this fall, the new Canyons Advantage program is being offered. The program offers application and orientation workshop, assessment testing workshop, and academic advisement workshop. To sign up, you can visit the website listed below. Dr. Blackwell was the first successful woman to get her medical degree. Here's more on that. Born in 1826, Emily Blackwell was described as shy and intelligent in her youth. Her father, Samuel Blackwell, moved her family from England to the United States when she was six. This sparked her interest in science and experiments on living things. Her sister became the first American woman to earn a medical degree and forged a path for Emily to follow, but it wouldn't be easy. Her application for admission to medical school was rejected by 11 schools simply because she was a woman. 
Although she was accepted by the 12th school, Rush Medical College in Chicago, pressure from the Medical Society of Illinois led the school to discontinue her studies at the end of her first year. She refused to give up and instead studied medicine privately for a long time, attending clinical lectures in New York City and took teaching jobs in order to earn extra money while she was trying to find a school that would admit her. She was finally accepted in Western Reserve University's medical school in Cleveland, Ohio, where she earned her MD degree in 1854. In 1857, Emily and her sister, along with Mary Zakharuska, opened a New York infirmary for women and children. As all three women knew from personal experience, they were providing a valuable opportunity for women as patients and as fellow physicians. Although her sister was largely responsible for the founding of the infirmary, all the credit for its survival and growth belongs primarily to Emily Blackwell. After two years of unceasing work, the elder Blackwell and Zaruska left to pursue opportunities elsewhere, leaving Emily Blackwell to run the institution. For the next 40 years, Dr. Emily Blackwell took over the management for the infirmary, overseeing surgery, nursing, and bookkeeping. Soon after taking over, Dr. Blackwell traveled to Albany, the state capital, to convince the legislature to provide a hospital with funds that would ensure long-term financial stability. Her remarkable administration skills gradually transformed the institution housed in a rented 16-room house to a hospital that grew so steadily it was forced to continue to move to even larger quarters. By 1874, the infirmary served over 7,000 patients annually. Emily Blackwell made a large impact on women's history and the advancement of medical studies in a time that women weren't seen as equals to men. Saving over 7,000 people annually is a great contribution to society, even in the 1800s. That's all for today. I'm Jake Freeman. Stay tuned for SNN Radio and Saugus Today. And I'm Patrick Moyna. Don't forget to visit SaugusNewsNetwork.com to keep up on the latest news on campus. Sorry for the technical difficulties, and please stand for the pledge. Please stand for the flag salute. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may now be seated. 